Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well. Thank you for tuning in because this is an experiment and this time we're actually running something. As you probably noticed, my previous videos have been so overblown, it's annoying and I haven't been doing anything to them. It just seems like every single time I upload them to YouTube, YouTube decides to just turn everything white. Honestly, somebody help with this problem. I, I guess I'm just not well versed in lighting because every single time I try to edit it, it just gets worse. So here, we're, we're trying something else. There is no light in this room. The only light is coming from the outside sunshine. We're gonna see if this helps, okay? I'm, I'm making it as dark as I possibly can so you guys can still see my face, all right? So, um, yes. Anyway, I told you guys that I was gonna cry this episode. I'm pretty sure I will. This is called the Moo in Muichiro. I think this was the first time when I read the manga I cried. Hopefully, in this episode, <laughs> You all will learn why Moichiro is my favorite character. Without further ado, let's get into this. Okay, and he's finally free, which is great. <laughs> oh! Yeah, so you're just gonna pull out of him out? He sounds so weak. Oh. All of those were in him? Now there are five? No, you gotta pay it forward. He, he saved you. You're a Hashira. Come on. おっさん。The is so cute. Were they ginkgo trees? Look at the Look at how pretty. 父さんの手伝いが好きだった。これ、僕の布団どうか。Would that raise her temperature? Oh, I see. Oh, she's gonna die here, isn't she? Look at that! This is beautiful! That's so sad. Yeah, not entirely. Wow. Wow. Look at how opposite they are. Wow, that's pretty frank. Kind of blunt. How do you know? How do you know? Wow, you just called yourself better than him, basically? He had an emotionless voice, though. Yeah, he was exactly like the Moichiro of now. He is. <laughs> he is a cold person. They're just living alone like this? Jeez, dude. They're going pretty quick with this. Wait, she's an Ubuyashiki. Is that Amane? Oh, wow. <laughs> ah, the ginkgo leaves! Oh, oh it is a mare! All right! Yeah, she must have known. Oh, he was so cute! Jeez. Yuichiro thinks caring about people is what kills them. Wow, that's pretty. So I'm guessing. You know what I do? I flip up my hair when I sleep so it doesn't heat my neck up so much. I do that in the summer. You should probably try that. Your hair is longer than mine. I love the way their eyes just set up sort of glow in the dark. <笑>無茶。ゴリラ、何の役にも立たねえだろ。つまらねえ命。わお、<笑> Dang. He really did care. 
ちを当てるならしてくれおったほは、のびちろうのやってむわ。無限の無なんだ。Please tell me you recognize it. Yeah. You know, it's just not shaped like a flame. Yeah. <laughs> Gosh, I forgot that was an attack he had. Well, Daki's sword couldn't be cut either. He just still, he just keeps going. Oh, I promise you that was it. Be... <laughs> yeah, he cut it. The elasticity can't be cut. It's beautiful. No. No, he's different now. You don't understand what you did to him. Like, you're not gonna be able to do it. It's glowing. Oh my gosh. Whoa! He's been in so pretty. So, Kana, Zuibun, Kanka, Nambiakun, and Moik, the Kata. Let the roasting begin. <laughs> Because you were trying to keep them alive. Yeah. Oh, and you were chosen. <laughs> That's But there are tears in my eyes. Seriously? Aww. <laughs> we got more Mui Chino. Yes! I might cry next episode too. Just tears of absolute joy. <laughs> Mui Chino Tokito, the Mist Hashira, had a twin who loved him so much he didn't have time to be happy or kind. I have his sword with me. I don't know where it is right now, but Sam gave that to me as a present for my birthday. I just wish I had it with me right now in this room. I have an idea of where it is, but I don't want to go looking for it right now because it's discussion time. So it should be obvious now that the marks, when, whenever the marks are granted to somebody, their power increases like exponentially. Because what we should have just, just, he just, he's, he's so amazing. He's so amazing. I, the, the mist animation lives up to my expectations and more. Oh my gosh. Ah, <laughs> oh, that was beautiful. It was so pretty. Okay, all right, what, what do we do? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I should probably go do this. I should have probably had them closer. Ginkgo leaves. I'll do something with them next time. But yeah, this is why the ginkgo leaves were there the entire time. Though Moichiro's aesthetic may be black and teal, his past is always outlined in gold. I love how they put it in the manga, like like the Mu in Moichiro is like the in and insignificant, and then they went for the uh, the the Mu in Moichiro is the in in infinity. Gosh, my tears just wouldn't stop. The thing about Moichiro that I guess I misread when I read the manga was I always thought that when he spoke rudely, he sounded rude. But here, 
in the in the anime it's obvious that he, there, there's just nothing behind his voice i feel like if i had seen the anime first i wouldn't have perceived him as so rude i would i would have perceived him as just aloof a little bit and and careless but not careless in the way of his technique careless in the way socially careless and i i love that i love that so much i'm, I'm glad that i that i misinterpreted muichiro's original state because i i also interpreted yuichiro as being super mean i'm glad that here when we first when we are first introduced to muichiro he sounds exactly like the muichiro of now to me really just sort of stands as a testament to how much muichiro loved his brother because even even though he forgot his brother, his kind-hearted nature was overpowered by just the frankness and bluntness of Yuichiro. Because he acts like Yuichiro, like the kind-hearted ones aren't meant to do anything, like they, they lead worthless lives. It amazes me that without his kind-hearted nature, Muichiro is just like Yuichiro. Which to me kind of shows, like, under all of that bluntness and just, and just, like, flatness, he does care. Because Yuichiro cared. Yuichiro saw potential in Muichiro that even Muichiro couldn't see. And it wasn't until, like, Yuichiro's literal last words that, that Muichiro finally realized, yeah, his brother loved him. And his brother was trying to protect him because there was something about Muichiro that was special. I feel like Yuichiro kept calling Muichiro useless and kept saying degrading things to him. So Muichiro wouldn't think much of himself and he wouldn't push himself because their mom worked and eventually got a fever because she worked so much and put herself out there. Their, their father went to go gather herbs and put himself out there and died. They both died. So I feel like Yuichiro kind of wanted to keep Muichiro in like this bubble, sort of this cage of sorts so he wouldn't go and hurt himself. And that is brotherly love, it's just that Yuichiro didn't know how to properly express the fact that he just didn't want Muichiro getting hurt. Usually a, a good way of making somebody feel like they're worthless is just by saying th like that they aren't worth the effort to go out and do something, is by calling them these names, which I wish that Yuichiro had tried a different method, because he tried to erase Muichiro's kind-heartedness. He kind of succeeded in death because Muichiro became like him. But it, it, to me, it was pretty obvious that when a demon comes along and says the same things that Yuichiro says to him, your lives are worthless. I feel like in his heart, Muichiro knows that's not true. He, he wanted to forgive his brother for saying those things because they're family. But if somebody outside, somebody, uh, Amane Ubayashiki, comes to, the, comes to the house, says they have worth, says that they are a legendary descendant, they, they are descendants of a legendary bloodline, and tells them you should become demon slayers because you have limitless potential, Muichiro suddenly sees that his family has worth. And deep down inside, I'm pretty sure he believed that they still had worth, even though Yuichiro was saying Saying all of that mean stuff. Then for a stranger, a very hostile stranger who hurt his brother to come in and basically repeat the same things that Yuichiro has been saying, and Muichiro knows in his heart is not true, the legend awakens, and, and, and Muichiro just destroys the guy and breaks, really. And that's just how it goes. That's just the way it is. Back when Tanjiro was saying, like, all of this kind of stuff, I thought to myself, maybe he thinks that Tanjiro looks like Yuichiro in a way. But then I remembered, oh, Yuichiro was rude to him, so who is he thinking of? And then, and then they revealed, oh, his father, and I was like, right, right, of course, it's, it's the dad, because the dad was super kind-hearted, the mom was super kind-hearted. So, Muichiro was surrounded by all of these kind-hearted people, but Yuichiro just did his best to nix everything they've said in favor of keeping Muichiro safe through the incredibly mean way of just degrading him, which was bad. But, um, yeah, so let's, uh, let's talk about what that mark does. I mean, dude. <laughs> That's, that's seriously amazing. So I had seen it actually in several different fan arts and, and color arts of being teal to match his, uh, to match his aesthetic, but they're red and that makes more sense. Not gonna say why, but that does make more sense. Muichiro was about to go numb and suddenly he gets the mark and he's in tip top shape, like, like the, the best he's ever been before. And that was all because of Gyoko. 
I love that Kyoko's like, you think that you can decapitate me. I am superior. I am Upper Moon 5. And I have not been, you know, trying to trying to get a human to look at me this entire time. I'm not going to go easy on you anymore. I'm going to defeat you. And and Luis is just like, oh really? Okay. <laughs> I genuinely do not care for you, but I'm gonna chop off your head right now. And the animation was beautiful, the attacks were amazing, and and obviously I wore this because it's the closest thing I have to Moichido's flashback clothes. He's so great, and I and I cannot wait for you guys to see how he improves. Ah, sons of legend indeed. <laughs> Okay, um, but yeah, so here, let's, um, let's talk about these. Moichiro is always displayed in terms of aesthetic with these guys around him. Specifically because the ginkgo tree is a long-lasting tree. They have a very long lifespan. I'll, I'll let my editing self put up like the the number of times like why ginkgo leaves are so impressive. I don't know if this is Japanese symbolism, but ginkgo leaves and the ginkgo in general just represent infinity. No limit, basically, because they live for- they live forever, basically. I should have definitely done some research before this happened, but I was just too excited. I'm glad that I remembered at least this much from the anime, so, um, I don't know what else to say. I cannot gush enough about the animation. I loved that- okay, I did- I loved that he had, like, another guardian in the form of his- his original swordsmith, T Tetsudo or something? Tetsuido? I, I don't know, I don't remember. But, um, I, I worry for you. I worry that people won't understand you in the years to come when I'm not there to watch over you. I love that there was someone out there who, despite his memory loss and despite his bluntness, seemed to just get what he was going through and get who he was that wasn't the master. Because, I mean, Ubuyashiki cares for everyone. Ubuyashiki remembers everybody's names even when they fall, and the only one that he really hates in the world is Muzan. Everyone else is- he treats with such kindness and respect and acceptance, and he just- he's made for comfort. He's- he's made to encourage and lift up because that's what a leader is supposed to do. But I mean, I, I, I'll i gush about Ubayashiki later. I'm sure we'll find an episode that's dedicated to him in the future. As a symbol of him sort of watching over Muichiro and becoming his guardian, sort of, he makes him this beautiful sword. And Muichiro goes out of his way to thank Kanamori for it and thank his original smith for it. Muichiro's got a lot on his shoulders, you know? He's got to carry on not only his memories and the memory of his brother and his parents, but also the efforts of everybody else, like Tanjiro and Kotetsu and Kanamori and his original smith, and Ubuyashiki even, and the Demon Slayer core. He's carrying all of them with him as he fights, well, an upper moon, and as he fights all of the demons. So he's got a lot riding on him, but as we have seen, he's kind of flawless at sword fighting. <laughs> he has that limitless potential his brother talked about, becoming a Hashira in two months, training so hard that he didn't care about his body. Muichiro just has that infinite potential, you know? Alright, be sure to like and comment and subscribe and ding the bell for notifications as I am trying to make this a source of income for me. You don't have to, but I, it would be super super cool if you did. Comment below, tell me your theories, analyses, tell me about what you think of Muichiro, Yuichiro, Kyoko, I guess. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for staying and have a nice day.